In this video, I show you how to find and shoot texture photos, and then how to use Photoshop to add them to your images. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV. Now, what happens when you come down to the beach and the thing you want to photograph is, well, it's underneath the water because it's high tide. Well, I'm not going to waste a trip to the beach. I'm still going to come up with a great photograph, but I'm going to create one myself. So the first thing you need to do is find something good to photograph. And if there isn't anything good to photograph, make something good. So I've just piled up a, a little set of stones here and I'm just going to photograph those. And then I'm going to go around the beach and just find a couple of textures to go with this. So we're going to combine the stones with a texture inside of Photoshop. Okay, let's do the easy bit first. Let's get a picture of these. Okay, so I'm going to use my Canon 60D and my trusty 24-105 lens. And I'm going to shoot this at f4 but I don't know if that's the right aperture. So I'm also going to shoot this at f5.6 and f8. So I'm going to take the same shot, three different apertures, and then I'll choose the best one when I get back on the computer. I'm just going to get down nice and low just to get the same kind of line as my, my pile of stones. And we'll get the shot. f4, f5.6, and f8. Now at this stage, I can guess which one I prefer, and it's probably going to be the f4 one, but you just know when you get back in front of the computer that the, the depth of field will change from shot to shot. So it's a great idea to bracket your apertures so you're guaranteed a good shot when you get back home. Okay, so that's the stones recorded. Now we've got to find some textures. And being on the beach, well, there really shouldn't be any shortage of textures, so uh, let's have a little wander around and see what we can find. So one of the great things about this beach is these wonderful beach huts and they go all the way along the back of the beach and because we're getting to the end of autumn, beginning of winter, they've all closed up and they're looking a little bit weathered as well and weathered is great if you're a photographer, that means textures. So I'm going to grab a few textures from a couple of the beach huts here. Now remember the picture I shot was in upright portrait format and as a result I need to shoot my texture pictures in upright portrait format to match. So I'm going to start with this little blue beach hut here. I think there's a couple of textures here. So let's just grab a few textures of the wood. And all I'm really doing is looking through the viewfinder and just trying to find different textures. So there's a kind of a nice wave going through the grain of the wood there. That works quite well. And I'm trying to imagine how these might go with my final image. Let's just try some down here as well. And of course, although these are blue in colour, that doesn't mean to say that I have to use a blue colour in my final picture. Okay, let's, uh, let's try another one. And although I'm getting pictures of the, the wood, because that's kind of the obvious stuff, what about down below? What about the, the concrete base these are sitting on? This is a, a texture as well, so let's get a picture of that too. I'm also going to take my textures at different zoom settings as well. Sometimes textures work well when you're really in close so you can really see the detail. Other times you actually want very, very fine texture to work with your picture. At this stage, I don't know which one's going to work best, so I'm going to take a selection. This one looks like it needs a bit more TLC, but it's got something that I just love when I'm looking for textures. It's got some rust. Rust always gives wonderful textures. So uh, let's get a picture of this. Now, with this lens, this isn't a macro lens. That means I can't photograph this in upright portrait format. But it really won't matter which way up it is, so I'll photograph it in landscape and turn it in Photoshop. Okay, so there's some textures in the bag. All I need to do now is to combine the texture with the pebbles, and we're going to do that in Photoshop right now. So now I'm inside of Photoshop CS6, and you can really see how the, the pebble picture and the textures work ever so well together. 
Now it's not quite as simple as grabbing a texture and just popping it over the top of the pebbles. That would be a little too easy, but it's not that difficult to get to this stage. In fact, I'm going to combine two of the textures together and create a, a sort of custom texture, if you like. First of all, I'm going to start with the concrete. This is the actual concrete that the beach hut was sat on. And all I'm going to do is to make it brighter. Lots of ways I could do that, but for textures, this is a great way to do it. It involves going to layer and choosing to duplicate the layer and then changing the layer blending mode from normal to screen. OK, so it's brighter, but why do that? Well, because now I can go to edit transform and rotate it 180 degrees that does a couple of things it helps to create a better looking texture with more fine detail but also it evens up any exposure issues if it is say brighter on one side than the other by flipping it over you create a nice symmetrical brightness across your entire texture okay now i said i'd use two textures and this is the other one this is the close-up of the rusty bar that was holding the the door closed and I couldn't get close enough to fill the screen with the rust, so I'll need to select it. And then we'll choose Edit and Copy. And then we'll go back and choose Edit and Paste. Now, obviously, it's the wrong way around, but that's not a problem. Edit, Transform, and Rotate it 90 degrees. And then, of course, it's a little bit too small. So again, Edit, and in this case, Free Transform, and we'll stretch it out. There you go. Now we need to blend that in with our main texture as well. So let's change the blending mode. Currently it's on normal. Let's change it to color burn. Now that gives a great texture. Lots of very interesting detail going on there. But remember, we've got quite a strong subject in the pebbles that will have to go in the middle. So to give the pebbles room and space to move in, I'm just going to put a layer mask onto that layer. I'll get a, a black paintbrush and I'm just going to paint it out. So really, I'm just using that rusty effect as a border just around the outside. Now, that looks OK, but we've got quite a lot of strong colors going on there. So I'm going to take a little bit of control over the colors by going to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Hue Saturation, and I'll put a tick in the Colorize box. And we'll bring the hue up to around about 30 to 40, just so we have a, a little bit of a, a sort of sepia tone going on there. Yeah, something like that. Now, that works OK. And the reason I did that as an adjustment layer is I can just drop the opacity back to about 60 to 70 percent, just so I can have some of the real color coming through as well as my, my colorized effect. Right, that's our texture created. Now we can simply go to Layer and choose to flatten the image. Select it all, edit and copy, and then we can go to the pebbles picture and choose to edit and paste. Now, how do you blend the texture and the pebbles? Well, it's all, always blending modes, but which one? There are so many to choose from. Well, you can try any of them and they will all give you different effects, but a couple that are worth a look. Multiply probably is the most popular blending mode for this sort of effect followed by overlay and soft light, which gives a slightly different look. But if you want to be a little bit different, try something like this. Let's go down to Divide, uh, which is in Photoshop CS5 and CS6. That gives a great effect. I really love the effect going on there. The only problem is it's a blue color, and really what I wanted was that warmer color that we created earlier. Not a problem, though. We can just go up to Image, Adjustments, hue saturation and I can take the hue slider and pop it either to the left or the right it won't matter and that will bring that warm color back through and for this picture that's a brilliant way to blend in both the picture and also the the pebbles with the texture so that is exactly how to create a picture with some texture on a day when it really wasn't a brilliant day for photography but it's great to come home with a great shot I'm Gavin Hoey Thanks for watching. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day.
Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.